Yeah. So how did Robert is here get started? Well, my my dad was dead broke in uh, 1959, first week or two of uh, November, and uh, he found himself no money at all, and he needed money to buy boxes for a second harvest of the cucumbers he was growing, and the first harvest of cucumbers apparently was never sold. He was at the broker and he said, hey, I need to either a front or pay me for the cucumbers. He said, no, we're going to dump the cucumbers because they weren't valuable. Wasn't worth enough money to sell, so we're just going to dump them. He said, well, I'll come get them. Yeah. So he went with his truck, picked up the 600 or 400 bushel of cucumbers, wow. and dumped them out. 400 bushels? 400 bushels. <laughs> and dumped them out, and he picked new cucumbers and filled the boxes up again because that's what he needed the money for. The boxes? To buy boxes. So he did boxes and brought them, filled up the boxes and brought them back to the broker. And he had cucumbers laying all over the place. He threw a bunch of them together and put me on this corner, uh -huh. which is not where the cucumbers came from. Uh -huh. He was growing beans here. Okay, okay. And uh, I sat here all day long with my cucumbers and no one stopped. So my mom told him the next day, you got to make him more visible. Just a little six-year-old kid, <laughs> you know? Yeah. You got to yeah. make more, so you put up a big sign. Yeah, kids sell cucumbers. <laughs> yeah. The big sign said, Robert is here. So uh, about an hour and a half after he put me out here, I sold all the cucumbers that he had put up there for me. I don't know how many it was. I don't know what I made, what I took in, but I shoved it in my pocket and walked home. And I got in trouble for walking home. Six-year-olds can't walk down the street. But they can sit on the corner all by themselves. <laughs> but we started doing it every weekend until Christmas break came. Christmas break, I worked every day. And it, that's when it really went goofy. I almost never had stuff to come home. And other farmers would stop and bring me stuff. Some would bring me tomatoes, some would bring me corn. The farmers kind of hang together. Yeah. And you know, the old story of farmers burn. This barn burns down, they'll come and help me go to the barn. Mm -hmm. That used to be really true, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, they were all friends of my dad, mm -hmm. and they knew he was going to a left hand turn, you know. Yeah. And they helped out. Yeah. I had to pay for nothing the first couple of years. My dad gave me the vegetables to sell, and the other farmers who brought vegetables to sell, and I'd sell them. That all went to my mom and dad because they were trying to scrape by. Yeah. Why shouldn't they come to Robert this year? In all honesty, that is the bigger question. And aside from the fun and friendly atmosphere that you'll get when you come and visit us at Robert this year, um, it's just another wonderful place to come and just see the variety of food that we have. A lot of these fruits don't grow in certain parts of the United States. So when you come here, you're able to almost feel like you're in a different country. Per se. You know, you'll see a lot of different fruit, like miracle fruit, you see banana, you see canistel. Um, we see so many people that come and they're like, oh my goodness, I haven't seen this since I left my country. And, you know, they're from India and they're, they're talking about their chiku or sapadilla and guanabana or guava. Um, so it's really fascinating to see that people, it, it takes people back to their childhood and it kind of reminds them of what they grew up around. So it's always sweet. And it's another place to try something new. I'm all about trying new things and encouraging other people to try new things, especially when it's locally grown, you're helping support local farmers. And by that, you're supporting families, right? And I'm all for supporting our local environment and local community. So that's another reason too. But other than that, it's just a fun for the atmosphere. So I'm trying something new. You know, there's a lot of things to see, a lot of things to try, a lot of new things to learn. So that's one thing I always like to tell people, come stop by and we love, well, we'd love to have you. The standoff. Oh. Yeah, you tell him who's boss. You tell him who's boss. So right here, we want to ask. We want to ask the audience how many animals they see. I've been coming here my whole life. About 20 years ago, I was flipping through the Reptiles magazine, and I saw you can overwinter your tortoise and Robert is here. I was like, what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought one day, maybe my, I have a sulcata. Uh -huh. And then I thought, you know. You can, 
drop it off and then pick yeah, it up. I, there's actually a local high school, and I'm overwintering him at the uh, local yeah, high school. That's fine. So, yeah. I've had the tortoise for 22 years, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. How's life here at Robert? Whoa, look at how much bigger this bird is compared to this bird. The emus are quite a large bird. At Robert is here, they sell the emu egg for $45. He's standing straight up. He's at least five feet tall, maybe six feet tall. And son's baseball team. Okay. And they were going to raise some money. And I says, well, don't charge for it. Put it on there. Donations are gladly appreciated. Appreciate it, yeah. And uh, these three little boys, of course, I gave them $50 for mine, you know, but they raised $600 in just a few hours. Great. Right. You know, you go a dollar a piece, and it might take in three days, you know. Who's so, this guy? I come home this year from a, wanted a vacation. I took three. I never take vacations. I took three this summer. Good. And I came home from uh, the one. That was middle of June to middle of July. Yeah. And this was in the, in the making. And I was here and I heard the chainsaw running for three days. And I figured I better go out and see what's going on. Because <laughs> my boys do things yeah, yeah. sometimes like drives me nuts. They commissioned the guy. My youngest son is almost, he's 37, 38, something like that. My youngest son has got a, two main flaws. He likes rust and he loves old, old trees that have been fallen by the hurricanes. <laughs> and he doesn't want to see them get destroyed. Yeah. They gave her life to be blown over by the storm Aww. and they might be 200 years old. Aww. And they cut up and grind them. And, yeah. You know. So this is a Cuban mahogany tree. Wow, it's gorgeous. And it was a lot bigger than this. Yeah, you can see the, like, the natural, they left a little of a natural edge down there at the bottom. Yeah. But it's, um, it, it's something he's really, uh, he's got mahogany wood all over the place. My front table or yeah, bench. Where the, where the bicycle guys yeah, are. Yeah. That's, that's all Cuban yeah. mahogany. Wow. If you walk around the side, you'll see slabs of it six foot tall, yeah. laid two or three inches apart. It just, I said, what are you going to do with it? It's just, it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> You have two kids? I got four. Four, okay. Yeah. Cool. And uh, he, he, the guy did a real good job. I mean, I wear an apron since probably, probably 64, 65. Wow. It's like they change yeah. so fast. It's just amazing. And you put the shirt with the hair and then you, I don't know what logo he, he liked the logo he put. I don't know what I got on this one, but he put the, uh, uh, the mango tango one. Oh, yeah, he did. You know, and this is a jackfruit, but it's very, very intricate. Yeah. To, oh, to geez, put no that, kidding. You know, uh, that's. Could have picked a watermelon, but he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, he needed a picture to, to go from. Yeah. And my son gave him one of my books. Okay. And okay. this is what I'm doing in the book, holding the jackfruit. Nice. You know. So tell us. Why do you have all these animals? <laughs> when you're a farm boy, you have farm animals. And I was never a farm boy at the house. Uh -huh. I was always here. Okay. Since I was six years old. Right. This is where I got off the school bus. They uh -huh. left me here. And my dad said, if you're not going to take care of the animals here at the house, mm -hmm. you can have them here, but you can't have them at the house. Oh my gosh. So I had always had turkeys and goats, <laughs> but it just, it was, Chickens. Turtles, I guess. Maybe no. Turtles. No, turtles. turtles came right after Hurricane Andrew. Okay. One of my customers um, had 107 tortoises. Oh, my. Galapagos, sulcatas, yeah. yeah. uh, redfoots, and yellowfoots. Uh -huh. And I was feeding his animals while they were at his house right. before Hurricane Andrew. Okay. And Hurricane Andrew hit, and he his caging was zero yeah uh -huh. and he had nowhere to keep his turtles and he said i'll keep my turtles at your place if you help me make a cage for them okay because i saw so i got a fence <laughs> i have all my fencing blew down right so we we uh, dug a trench 
the shape of what we have. Yeah. And we fenced. Um, you buried the fence. The concrete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That'll do it. And then uh, you know had it did well, and it, it wore out. We got what we got now. The concrete is uh, either in or, or out of it. We had to put fence up uh -huh. somewhere because uh -huh. the turtles would dig. Oh, they yeah. dig right through it. Centurion. Uh -huh. He was a hundred year old turtle wow. from the Galapagos. He was cool. He he would let the goats climb on back and he would stand on all fours and get them the goats higher to eat more. <laughs> you know, the, the goats and the turtle talked. Wow. Absolutely one hundred percent. That's crazy. You know, a lot of people don't believe me, but we we interacted with the both of them. Uh -huh. And you can see it even with these, the little ones, the cicadas do the same thing. The turtles, the goats want to eat higher. Uh -huh. and they'll get on the goat, on the turtle, and... and Full you know, elevator go, there. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh, yeah. But the, the Galapagos, he could get really high. A lot of people don't know that the tortoises love to eat meat, oh. you know? And uh, the Galapagos are known for catching birds. And everybody Ooh. says, how do they catch a bird, you know? Yeah. And you ever heard of Richard Paul? No. He wrote all the books on the Galapagos tortoises. Okay. When they need help with species and this, that, and the other, they call Richard. But uh, the tortoise lives in a dry mm -hmm. desert type situation. Mm -hmm. And when the birds are looking for shade, the Galapagos will stand really tall. And they know when that bird's underneath there. <laughs> and all of a sudden, boom. They drop down and catch them a bird. Elevator drops. And, they, and then they eat the bird. Wow. You know, so they, little protein they're, meat, they're meat eaters. Huh, wow. You know, and because they only have to eat one, they only have to eat a good meal once a year. And they, most of the time, if the meal had some moisture, then that's all the water they need for about, you know, quite a while. You know, they don't need to eat too much. They move so slow, their metabolism. Huh. Get water My once in sure very much. Oh yeah, they'll eat. They'll eat as much as put in front of. Them, yeah. You know. Any other cool favorite animals that you're like? Oh, I had that two. Cool story. I had two donkeys. We liked a lot. Okay. They were, you know, they're two brothers, and I got them. My daughter was in college, and that was in. 2002 I think my oldest daughter was in college and when she came home I had got to she said you got to build them a barn so we built the barn we had there and we named it the donkey barn and they were cool they were really nice and they got a little bit mean with each other and I gave them to another friend of ours and uh, she kept them for a while and then she uh, decided she wanted to get rid of them I said well, if you're gonna get rid of them I want them back Right. Even though you spent money on him, right. so I brought him back, and he was very friendly to his brother, and uh, they lived good, and they got along good, and then he started growing a big growth on his neck, and we think he died of cancer, and then his brother died six weeks later from broken heart. Oh no! Yeah, he was just you could they see. They fought all the time, but they actually. Yeah, like yeah, them. it's like a marriage more than brother. Yeah, <laughs> so my donkeys were pretty cool. And I, I never want to get any more donkeys. So. And I bought these Dern Zebus, the miniature cows. Yeah. And they're oh, they're so cute. Yeah. That's a good choice. Yeah, it's a tough one to handle, though. Boy, they're strong. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're strong. <laughs> we have ourselves a dinosaur. Check out this iguana, it's over four feet long. Huge spikes, beautiful orange. Look at that male throat fan. He's just enjoying the sunshine today. Yes, you are definitely impressing the girls, I see that. The banding on the tail is pretty sweet. I like them. Yeah. Do you, do you have any snakes around the property? Every now and then, hardly never. Oh, okay. You know, we got a lot of uh, 
those other reptiles that eat the eggs real bad. Uh, they're not an iguana. They're a tegu. Oh, really? It's, we have a lot of tegus. Like, do you know where they might be? They, they can turn out underneath the, anywhere. But the tegus will eat bufo toads. Uh, oh, oh, well, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, but they do eat every egg they can find. So all the birds and all the people who have eggs laying around, the turtles and the, huh. you know, chickens. I haven't seen any, I've I heard that there's tegus here, but I haven't seen any. Oh yeah, we have, they look like an alligator. Oh yeah. They eat nasty, nasty. Yeah. They nasty, nasty. yeah. We actually don't own any tegus because they eat too much. And then they're always pooping and everything. It's kind yeah. of a mess, so. Yeah, the they want us poop in the pool. That's why people don't like them and they eat. They love this hibiscus leaf. Wow. Oh, they love it. That's their Tortoises drug. do too. That's their drug of choice. Yeah. <laughs> it's their yeah. drug. They're so gorgeous. The blues are just... Oh. Even like around the eyes, like look how gorgeous that is. Yeah. How do you like your carrot from Robert is here? Is that really yummy? Is it really yummy? <laughs> Such a yummy carrot. Thank you for telling me that. Hey Jude, look. <gasps> a big giant carrot. Is that from Robert is here? That's a big one, buddy. Can you eat that whole carrot? He's going to try, Daddy. One bite at a time, buddy. Yeah, that was good advice from Data. <laughs> I guess some things happen for a reason, you know. Uh, if, it, if there's a plan for all of us, because I was still, I didn't even know the hurricane was coming until the Sunday before. I think it was a Sunday, and and we didn't get couldn't prepare. You could no one prepared for this. It was 200 mile an hour winds, and it was just crazy. And uh, you know, I didn't lose anybody else. I didn't lose any kids, and. Uh, didn't lose my wife, you know, yeah. it's just so much stuff could happen, right. you know. I'm sorry, I'm going to lie. I'm losing. Little Robert's really fun. He's better at this than I am. <laughs> <laughs> 